All right, you have reached green screen compositing part two. Um, make sure you've seen part one. Here's the link otherwise. Um, enjoy. Anyway, so we found our point where he gets shot and we're gonna add our bloodburst 16 above it. All right, so there's the start of it. And um, boom, that's where it starts. All right, so first frame where he gets shot, pretty much select that layer and just move it to his head. Obviously, it will not explode that hugely, so let's press S for scale and scale it down a bit. That looks about good. And just align it to the side of his head. So now the important part is he'll be moving down his head. And the blood stays where it was. So what we need to do is do some key framing. So press, um, just uh, press a little arrow here, twice, and you'll get position and rotation. That's what we're going to look at. So keyframe position, sorry, rotation and position. And then using page down or command and then right arrow, just go through the frames and as it goes, just move it down to where it used to be. You can sort of go f two frames, skip two frames. Um, keep going. Sort of go. It doesn't have to be perfect. It could be quite rough because we'll be applying motion blur. So it'll sort of blur it. To its existence. All right. When he starts moving a bit faster, you might have to. Oh, it looks pretty good. Just keep following until you get to the end. And at this point, really, you can start. Yeah. At this point, it'll end. So we just cut it off right there. So what you get is something like this. Alright, so we've keyframed it all. We don't necessarily use rotation, but we might be using rotation and the other guy. So what you need to do is close that up and come over here to motion blur. So turn on motion blur for the blood burst and turn it on the master blur as well. So now as you watch it, you'll see that it, as it falls down, sort of motion blurred with the motion. So it looks pretty good. So I'll just rename that guy to blood burst all right I'm pretty happy with that so now let's do the blood burst for guy number one so turn off guy two blood burst and turn off guy two and turn on guy one and then find the spot where he'll get shot all right so that's the point where he gets shot so move the blood burst down into the timeline Rename it Guy One Blood Burst. Um, okay, uh, it's over here at the moment, so just Guy One Blood Burst. Move it down over here next to his head. I made it a bit bigger in my um, in the one I put on the site, but we're not gonna have it that big. So just move the beginning. There we go. Boom. S for scale. Make it a bit smaller. That looks pretty good. All right, now what you want to do, since we're going to be working with rotation, we want the rotation point to be from here, not from here. Um, as you can see, there's the anchor point. Um, the reason why is, let's take, press R for rotate. Rotate this now, and it's going to rotate around that point. We want it to rotate from this point here. So what you do is use the pan behind tool, and just drag that over to that point right there. So now when you press R and rotate, it rotates from that point, which is what we want. Okay, so set uh, open, just click the arrow twice and set keyframes for position and rotation. And again, using the arrow tool, let's just go frame by frame, moving it down with the guy. And then turn on motion blur for that layer as well. And let's have a look. Looks pretty good. So another thing I added um, was some blood splatter. Let's just turn everything on. So he gets shot and he gets shot. So what I added was some blood splatter on 
the back wall here. Um, but that sort of doesn't make sense because he's getting shot from the side, silly me. So I'm just going to focus on the blood splatter on the floor down here when he falls because all that blood and gut sort of makes, you know, makes the blood splatter onto the floor. So find the part where he, his body sort of whips his head to the floor, right there. So from that point, I'm going to add a splatter or a splat. So if we open the splat, you'll see. Can't really hard to see, but it sort of splatters against the floor. You'll see when we bring him into the comp. All right. Let's so bring in blood splat on top of that all. Um, and from that point on. Just line it up a bit. All right. So there it is. So we need to make it a 3D layer because we're going to sort of try and rotate it here. Um, x-axis is rotate it, flatten it against the floor. There we go. And put that behind, or sorry, under guy one. There we go. So just move that around and do, let's just see what it looks like. I need to scale it down a bit. So scale. Scale it up with that way. All right, so that's the blood splatter as he falls into the floor. Um, and now a little blood pool that I also had in my in my clip online, because um, his head's just been blown off pretty much, big hole in it. So there must be some blood coming out, right? Yeah, I figured. So um, what I did was layer new solid. I made it sort of a dark red bloody color like that. Okay. Um, and I pressed OK. Now, um, make that layer invisible. I'll call it blood. Rename it blood pool. All right, so make the blood pool layer invisible. And um, just drag it down here under guy one. OK, so um, the puddle only has to start when his head hits the floor. So let's just move that layer just to there. All right, so zoom in a bit so we can see a bit better. Okay, now take the pen tool and have Roto Bezier on. Makes a smooth, rounded shape. And this draw like the beginning, imagine the beginning of a puddle at the back behind his head. All right, use the arrow tool, just adjust it a bit. Turn on blood pool there and turn off guy one and you'll see that there's a little puddle there now. So what we want to do is have the puddle grow from that point as his head hits the ground. So what we're going to do is click on blood pool and press MM on the keyboard. MM. And we're going to animate the path. So that's where the puddle starts. So we click on the little stopwatch and then go ahead further to where can go that far there and then just expand using the arrow tool just click away from the mask and just expand the mask as if the blood is flowing so try to make it look as natural as possible um, guess that'll do so now you'll see that the puddle is sort of shrinking and growing so now what you can do is turn on guy one and if we press play so it comes a bit too soon I think so if we just drag that over a bit so just keep dragging the last keyframe away and it'll make it go slower I'm pretty happy with that because that's where the composition would end right there. All right. So one last thing would maybe be to feather that mask. So come down here to the blood pool mask feather and just feather it that little bit more. So as you can see in the final video, um, there's a bit of sh camera movement going on, which makes it look that bit more realistic. Um, not just the static shot that we're working with right now. 
Um, so how do I accomplish this? Well, there's two ways. You can do it manually with keyframes in After Effects, or you can also check out videocopilot.net. They have a really useful set of video copilot presets, which includes a little plugin or a preset called um, Aftershake, which uh, sort of automates the process of going through all the keyframes to make a really quite realistic camera shake. So go ahead and download that if you um, if you haven't already. And um, so once it's all in, it'll be over here in your um, animation presets, video copilot, aftershake. Um, yeah, it's really useful. So download it now. All right. So how do we do this? Well, first of all, I'm gonna pre-comp this whole composition. So select all the layers. Um, shift command C and let's call this entire comp so here we have our entire comp in one layer so now what we do is create a layer new null object we call this null object after shake then go ahead and drag after shake null since we're applying this to a null object to the after shake null object and now you can see that that null object is moving camera movement all right so what you then want to do is take the little pick whip here and attach it to aftershake now this is called parenting so you can do it a different way select the entire comp and go here to the drop down menu and select aftershake since that's the one we're parenting it to aftershake so now if you press play you'll see that it moves obviously this is way too shaky way too much it's crazy so what you want to do, click on Aftershake and come over here to the slider. Uh, put speed at about 1, amount at about 12 maybe, and rotation at about 8. Let's see how that goes. Okay, let's raise the amount a bit. 15 maybe. That looks pretty good. Maybe bit speed 1.5. Now there's one problem though. Um, you can see the edges of the composition. So what you want to do is zoom in very slightly to scale. Just scale it up just a little bit. So plan ahead. See, I didn't really plan ahead with our feet. But plan ahead in your composition um, and sort of compensate for, for this. There we go. So it looks pretty good. So turn off um, the visibility of the null object and then you'll have your final so one, one last thing you can do is add a vignette. Layer, new, adjustment layer. Uh, rename that vignette. Oops. Vignette. So what you do is apply a um, exposure effect. Exposure effect. Drag that to the vignette. Take down the exposure. About five is, minus five is good. Then you use the shape tool up here. You choose rounded rectangle tool and just draw a vignette type area. Obviously, that's inverted, so you can invert that mask and then press F for feather and feather that mask. So we'll make a nice, nice vignette. And if you press MM, you get expansion options. You can expand, contract the mask. So that's pretty cool. All right, so that's it for the green screen compositing tutorial. Uh, if you take a look at fxhippo.com, um, you'll see that you can email me at fxhippo at gmail.com, and I will be able to send you a download link to all the content used in my tutorials, uh, the footage and the background images, etc. So uh, yeah, stay tuned and um, stay and stay cool. Yeah. Anyway.